Okay, so we're going to start section 2.4 and 2.5. There's a worksheet on D2L. It looks like this. Uh, some of you may have already downloaded, started working on it. That's always fine if you want to do that. But um, I think we have enough information up to this point where we're able to go through and solve these using our prior knowledge. So let's take a look at this triangle. Uh, it says solve the triangle. That means I'm going to be given some things and you need to find the rest. Okay, so what is it I'm given? Well, I'm given that A, I don't know, B is 53 degrees, 47 minutes. And I'm also given that little b equals 25. And I have scrap paper ready, but I think I'm going to be able to get all of my work on here. So what do you think the first thing is I can, I can find? Given I know C is 90, big C. Angle B is 53 degrees, 47 minutes. And I know length little b is 25. What do you think we can find now? A. Yeah, angle A. Because angle A plus angle B has to equal 90 degrees. So I'm going to do that subtraction, something I had learned before. And I'm going to get angle A equals, let's see, 90 degrees minus 53 degrees, 47 minutes. I'm going to borrow one. So that's now 89 degrees, 60 minutes. And when I start to do subtraction, I have 13 minutes and 36 degrees. All right, so I know what A is. Angle A, 36 degrees, 30, well, heck, they're already all 36 degrees, 13 minutes. So that wasn't much help. But I'm gonna come over here and put 36 degrees, 13 minutes. All right, so what do you want to find next? How about, I? what do you want to find? We have a choice, little a or little c. I know, it's a tough choice, right? It's a tough choice. C. C, let's find c. Let's calculate what c is. So I'm going to take this angle measure. I kind of like this one just because it's there for no reason. And I want to find C. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, wait a minute, I can find C because I can say the sine of A equals, here's A, sine of A equals, well, I don't know, opposite. Crap. Maybe I shouldn't have used the sine. I think a little better choice may have been the cosine. Cosine of A equals adjacent. 25 over hypotenuse. Maybe I should have used scratch paper. Okay, so now the cosine of 36 degrees, 13 minutes equals 25 divided by H. I'm gonna multiply by H, which is gonna send H over there. I'm going to divide by the cosine. Why am I calling it H? I should be calling it little c, shouldn't I? I'm sorry. Some of you are probably saying, where in the heck did H come from? H for hypotenuse. Continuing on, 36 degrees, 13 minutes. Calculator. Oh, I know that whole second apps is gonna come into play. Do, do on, it's on, it's on. I need to clear, I need, let's see, I'm gonna do the whole thing. 25 divided by the cosine of 36 second apps degrees, 13 second apps minutes. 25 divided by, I double checked it, 30.987. Um, so I don't need that. I need 30 
0.987. And if I come down here, I'm looking, it looks like they rounded it to the tenths. So C is now out and D is out because I know A is 3613. I know little C is going to be 31 because they actually rounded to the tenths. Now I have to find, so this is 30.1. Now I have to find little a. It's not lost. I know, right? How about I do this? I'm going to stay with that angle measure. This time I'm going to say the tangent of 36 degrees 13 minutes equals opposite over adjacent. In order to calculate a, I'm going to just bring the 25 over. It's peanut butter jelly time, or calculator time. Clear, 25 times the tangent of 36 second apps, degrees, 13 second apps, minutes. Close that parenthesis, and I get 18.308. Eighteen point three. Woo, woo, I have a winner. B. Complete the triangle. What do you think about that? Good. All right. Number two, there's a second one. I'm gonna pause the recording. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to work on that and then we'll see what we got. Okay. Okay, so I'm looking at little a is 10.9. I have little b is 21.7. You wanna find a. Okay, I wanna yeah, find a. Okay. Yeah, angle a equals Opposite 10.9 over 21.7. Good. Great way to start. Once I find the value of angle A, I can find the value of angle B. Could I at this point right now find little c, length c? Yeah. Yeah. By doing what? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. A squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I, here's one way to find a by doing the tangent of those. Here's how to find the value for the length c. Could I have done this to find b? The tangent of b equals opposite 21.7 over adjacent 10.9. So three different things that I could use to find those values. Lots of different ways to do it. I could have found C, and then I could have said, well, the sine of A equals opposite over adjacent. Once I found the value for C over here. Hey Siri, what's 10.9 squared plus 21.7 squared? Hey Siri, what's the square root of 589.7? The square root of 590.0 is 24.237. I have a value for little c. 24.2. It's going to be one of those two. So you're gone and you're gone. All right, you got the idea though, right? How to go through and finish it. I believe at the very end, the uh, correct answers are there. Can you actually calculate out like the tangent of A equals 10.9 sure. over 21.7? Sure. Tangent of A equals, um, 
Hey Siri, what's 10.9 times 21 point? Oh, never mind, Siri. I do it myself. She's being, that's my fault. So I want 10.9 divided by 21, ah, 21.7 equals 0 0.502. So 0 0.502. And then if you remember what we're going to, we're going to get on the calculator and make this the inverse of 0 0.502 to get the angle measure. So if I come in here and I hit second 10 of 0 0.502, I'm going to get an angle measure, 26.66. Okay, I get you. Okay. All right, well, there's another one, except on that one, you have to draw the triangle. It's not already drawn for you, but let's take a look at number four. On a sunny day, a tree in a shadow form a single right triangle. A tree Bad tree, real bad tree. And its shadow form a right triangle. Okay, it's a bad right right angle. All right. Um, if the hypotenuse is 40 meters long and the tree is 32 meters tall, how long is the shadow? How long is the shadow? Well, I know this. Shadow squared plus 32 squared equals 40 squared. Hey Siri, what's 32 squared? 32 raised to the second power is 1024. 1600. Hey Siri, what is 1600 minus 1024? I don't know why I ask her. I have my own. Hey Siri, what's the square root of 576? What do you think about that? Good? Hey, Sergio's here. Good morning, Sergio. Yeah. Yeah, I got some thumbs up. I got a yep from Sergio. So this whole section is dealing, like I said before, with all of these things we know. We're just trying to now put them all together. And yeah, you know, I, I, up at our cabin, we um, we had a tree that we were going to cut down, but we were afraid it was going to hit the cabin. And and I did a little of this and a little of that. And we figured how big the tree was and checked it out. Luckily, we were able to cut it and it went a different direction. But I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to land on our cabin. So yeah, and once in a while, this tree stuff works. Oh boy, look at five. Uh, Cons... Conservation officer needs to know the width of a river in order to set instruments correctly for a study of, all right, so this is what we need to find because here's the river. So we need to find this. And we, you know, we can call this R if we want. We can give it a big name, all right, you know, anything we want. From point A, that's here, the conservationist officer walks a hundred feet downstream. Uh, yeah, and then there are ways for you to be able to do angle measures, but he comes up with this to be a 30 degree angle. How wide is the river? Somebody give, let me have a formula. Here's 30 degrees. I need to calculate R and I know 100. Tangent of 30 equals uh, the size of the river divided by 100. Very good. Thank you. Perfect. Tangent of 30 equals R over 100. 
Hey Siri, what's 100 times the tangent of 30 degrees? Yeah, you know, help. Somebody else find it? Somebody else able to calculate it? I guess 58 rounded up. You like B? I think, yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to take a look at number six. Number six, from a boat on a river below a dam. So here's the river. I should use blue. Here's the river. Here's the dam. A fish was swimming along in the river and ran into something solid. What did it say? Dam. <laughs> oh boy. It's good everybody's muted because I'm sure the laughter would be overwhelming. So from a boat on the river, from the boat, which is right here, the angle of elevation. That means if I stand here and look up, that is what's called the angle of elevation. The angle of elevation, well, don't, don't worry about that part. The angle of elevation is 14 degrees, 14 degrees, 57 minutes. If the dam is 1,286 feet above the level of the river, 1,286 feet. How far is the boat from the dam? I need to find this distance. I'll call it D. Looks like we have a nice formula we can use again, right? So yeah, I'm gonna call on somebody. Um, Gianni, give me the formula. Would it be um, tangent equals 14 degrees, 57 minutes over 1268? Well, I need to do the tangent of an angle measure. So the tangent of 14 degrees, 57 minutes is going to equal opposite. Oh, sorry. Yeah, D over 1268. Well, we want opposite first. Oh, be so then 1268 over D. Yeah, 1286 over D. So I'm going to multiply by D, and I'm going to divide by the tangent of 14 degrees, 57 minutes. I know it's going to be four because all three answers, four answers start with a four. One, two, three, ten. It's peanut butter jelly time. One, two, eight, six divided by the tangent of 14 degrees, 57 minutes. I know the answer. Anybody else have an answer? 4,816. Excellent. D. So it would be D. Good. Got that one done. Got number five done. There's a ladder leaning. All right. So one of the things I also want to mention is you may see a problem, and this was the angle of elevation. There's also something called the angle of depression. So you may get a word problem that we have a plane flying. You know, that's a little bit like a plane. That's more of a cowboy boot on its side than a plane. But the angle of depression would be an angle that goes down. Angle of elevation was an angle that went up. So it might be, you know, you're in a plane and you look down and, and you, you know that uh, you, you got this going and that going and you start to calculate some things. But the angle of depression 
is from a straight line going down. Cool beans. I go through a lot of paper. All right, so now let's move on. We're going to start to get into some some uh, an observer, the radar station, the point. Yeah, we're going to get into some of these right here. They're called bearing problems. Bearing problems never made sense till about two years ago. I was out on a boat, and it was a, a bigger boat, and they had all this bearing stuff going on. And I'm like, okay, this, yeah, this is um, kind of cool to actually put it into play. The observer for a radio station is located at the origin of the coordinate system. So the origin of the coordinate system is gonna be right here. Okay. For the point given, find the bearing of an airplane located at that point. So the point is six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's over there. All right, well, if this is six, and this is six, and I go to make a triangle kind of deal, right? And this is six. What angle measure is that? 45. Very good, 45 degrees. Now bearing is gonna be um, taken two different ways, okay? The first way is what you see in front of us where you know, well, yeah, all of these say, um, what, what's, what's the bearing? Well, 45 degrees, all right? So these are going to be given with these two numbers. And I'm going to start at this point, and you all know where north is and south is, and hopefully this is east and this is west in your world. And to get here, I'm going to go one of these. Let's see. I don't think I'm going to go south at all. Let's see what this one is. North. 45 degrees west. Well, north 45 degrees west would be that way. I think I want this guy north. I want to go north 45 degrees because that's opposite that one. That has to be 45 to the east. So a way to give a bearing is start at the origin, go north or south, and then make an angle turn to the, either the east or the west. Okay, so that's the start of bearings. Got that one done. Number nine, a fire is sighted due west of lookout A. Look out, A. So here's A. There's the lookout. And the fire is due west. So due west is this way, straight due west. And right here in flames in red, you know, you gotta, you gotta fire, fire, fire. A bad fire, I know. The bearing of the fire from lookout B, which is 14.1 miles south of A. So I'm going down here to B, which is now 14.1 miles. Is north. 32.57 degrees west. So if I start here and I go north 37, 32.5 degrees west, that's this angle measure, 32 degrees, 57 minutes yeah, 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 is to there. A fire started due west of lookout A, up here's A. There it is. The bearing of the fire from lookout B, which is 14.1 miles south, is 32 degrees 57. So from this spot, I'm going north and then turning 32 degrees 57 minutes to the west. How far is the fire from B? So I need to find this distance right here. Now that I have it laid out, I'm going to use angle measure 32 degrees 57 minutes, and I'm going to make a trig equation out of it, right? 
I'm given my adjacent to B and I'm gonna have to find D. So adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, this guy's going to be cosine. Cosine, good. All right, let's see if you can come up with D. And then did we get a D? 16.8. 16.8. Nice. Nine is done. Questions? Uh -oh. We have a couple here. 10 and 11 look a little similar. Pick up, but let's just pick one. Let's go with 11 down here on the bottom. Ship travels through the night. A ship travels 90, seven meters on a bearing of 34 degrees. Okay. This one is different. This is a different bearing than these two. Up above, they gave me north or south and then west. This one's just giving me a degree measure. And I've had students in class, like, yeah, I was in the Navy and we had to learn both of those and, and so on. All right, so we're going to take a look at 11. And how does this work? Well, we are going to do bearings by going up and turning right. So it's almost like a northeast thing. So a ship travels 97 kilometers on a bearing of 31 degrees. That means this guy right here is going to be 31 degrees. And this ship travels 97 kilometers. Okay. And then travels on a bearing of 121 degrees. So now I'm going to kind of do this again up here because I'm going to face north. This time I'm going to turn 121 degrees which takes me past 90. And now I'm gonna start traveling this direction. And it's gonna go this for 124 kilometers. Find the distance from the starting point to the end of the trip. Find this distance right here. All right, so I, I, I'll, if you don't mind, I'm going to blow this up, make it a little bit bigger. So that's 97 at a bearing of 31 degrees. Now I'm coming down this way, 124 degrees. And that's after, you know, I, I did another, I'm going to try to do this a little lighter. I did this and I went 121 degrees. Hmm. What do you think the angle measure is here? Inside the blue. Forty-five. Forty-five? No. So if I did a straight line, right? This is 121. What would the rest of the way be? Well, it has to be 180. Agreed? 
So I'm going to go 50, 59. It's 59 degrees. Okay. So right in here is 59 degrees. This line and this line, would you agree these two lines are parallel? Yeah. Yes. And there was a thing called alternate interior angles being the same. So what do you think the measure is where my pencil point is right now? 31. 31. And if I add those two together, 31 and 59, son of a gun, it's a right angle in there. That's awesome sauce. So now I have a right triangle. It's not drawn very well to proportion, but I have a right triangle. This is 90 degrees. So if I know this distance is 97, this distance is 24, and this is my hypotenuse, I don't even need anything else with the angle measured because I need to calculate D. 97 squared plus 124 squared <clears throat> equals D squared. No way, way, way. So a non-directional bearing always starts at the y-axis and goes clockwise? That's going to start with the x. So if I say, if I say 45 degrees, it's going to go up and turn 45 degrees. So it'll be going that direction. If I said 190 degrees, I'm going to face north and start turning 90, 180, right to there. So it will be going in that direction because this is the 190 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry. I would start here facing north and I would turn to my right 90, 180 to get to there. So really it would be heading that direction, looking at a map. Okay, and is there such thing as a negative bearing? Not that I've ever heard of. Nice, cool. Yep. That's it. Yep. No, that's fine. I mean, and you're thinking 350 degrees would go all the way around to about here. So that's how you would get in the northwest area. Okay. I, I moved my paper, but did someone get an answer here? 97 squared plus 124 squared. And then take the square root of that. I got 157. Is that one of the choices? Bam, there. Whoop, there it is. Nice job. So we have that one done. All right, so we're just doing problems and we're learning uh, different things from doing problems like the bearings today. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Somebody say, oh man, oh man, oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> All right, this one, we got our work cut out for us. Let's see what we have. Find and calculate H. I mean, it's one of those find H. Oh, right there it is. <laughs> no, that's not funny. Calculate H. And I'm looking at this as a mess and I'm going, I, I need something else. I need this distance from here to here. And I'm going to call that X. Now, what we have not had up to this point is two unknowns. We were always able to solve it to be one unknown. So I'm going to help you and show you how, how to do this first one. And um, the next one, hopefully when you see it, you'll be able to do it a little easier. First one, I'm going to say, take a look at the big triangle. And I have 24 degrees, two minutes. So I'm going to write an equation for the tangent. The tangent of 24 degrees, two minutes equals opposite over adjacent. Now I'm gonna say the tangent of 56.5 degrees equals H over X. All right. So watch this. If I have this left side, 
on this right side, two equations with two unknowns. We've done some of these way back somewhere along the line, but I'm gonna take this and say, let's get H alone. So now I have the tangent of 24 degrees, 24.2 degrees times 131 plus X equals H. And over here, I have the tangent of 56.5 degrees times X equals H. Now, if they both equal H, then I know that they have to equal each other. So my next statement, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit easier on myself right now as well. I'm gonna say, what is the tangent 24.2, times 131 plus X equals, and I'm gonna do the tangent of 56.5. I get 1.51, 1.51 X. So I started with two equations, two unknowns, Got them both to equal each other. Times 131 equals. So now I distribute. I get 58.819 plus 0.449x equals 1.51x. One point five one minus point four four nine one point zero six one X fifty eight point eight one nine divided by one point zero six one. Hopefully you're playing along at home in case I screw this up. Point four three seven equals X. Now, my question was, what is H? And I ended up finding X. And hopefully that seems like a reasonable number, 55. Yeah, I think so. So how do, how do I calculate given X? Well, I'm just going to go right back up here. Say, oh, I need to find H. And I know from this equation, if I know what X is, I can just multiply that by the tangent of 56.6, excuse me, 0.5. And I get my result, H is 83.75. And it looks like it wants me to round up. And I think 84 is gonna be my answer. Whoa. It's got a lot of elements. It's got a lot of pieces, yeah. And seeing it once is great, and then doing it is another thing. But once you see how to do it, it's like, okay, yeah. Use and us trig functions. That's kind of cool. Measure that angle and move on, you know, a certain amount, and you get a new angle measure. You can figure out how high that is. Because there's like snakes and stuff in this area where X is. You don't want to walk there. I don't like spiders or snakes. But that ain't what it takes. Cool. Ba -da -ba. So if I go back to the beginning, we did number one. That one's done. We did number two, and we did number four. So number three. I'm going to put that on my note here. Number three, as you can see, single PDF. Not today, for the test. We did five and six. So here's number seven and number 10. So three problems that we didn't do. I'm going to let for you to do. I'm going to put you in pairs. And when you're done, we're done. Come back and say, we're done and head on out. And um, that's where we're going to stop for today.